As we emphasized the last time, uh, m most of the relationships that we're going to work with in, re in the resistivity methods um, discussions uh, re relate back to Ohm's law where the potential or potential difference is equal to the current flow times the resistance. And uh, we know that the resistance is, is a function of other properties of the conductor, specifically the resistivity and the length of the conductor, uh, and inversely as the cross-sectional area of the, uh, you know, of the conducting surface uh, times the, times the uh, current flow. Uh, so rho is our resistivity. We remember from our discussions of, um, of terrain conductivity that rho is also equal to the reciprocal of the, or the inverse of the conductivity so that uh, Ohm's law could be rewritten in terms of conductivity. So we could have it in terms of resistivity or conductivity in these two forms. So the basic uh, setup that we have, we mentioned, you know, as we mentioned the last time, we have uh, a battery and uh, positive and negative electrodes and positive current flow is considered to be the, uh, you know, the direction of current flow is considered to be the a direction of flow of uh, positive charges. Um, and you know, in order to characterize the potential difference that we measure with a resistivity meter, we need to develop, uh, we're, we're going to develop that relationship. And we're going to start by looking at the potential of uh, just a arbitrarily located point. Uh, this could be one electrode of the uh, potential um, electrode, uh, uh, the, the, the ammeter. And and we'll, we'll see that we see that this point A is located a distance D1 from the source electrode and a distance D2 from the sink electrode. And uh, we need to consider the potential relative to both the source and the sink electrode. So starting off with uh, Ohm's law, um, we look at the potential at this point A relative to the positive current electrode. <clears throat> We see that it's located at a distance d1 away, and we're in a medium with a resistivity rho. And uh, in this diagram, we're going to let L, you know, in this expression up here, L is going to be equal to d1. It's just the uh, path length over which current has flowed. And think for a minute, what is the conductor cross-section area down here? Well, we have current, which is flowing out in all directions, really. So, so the we could consider the conductor surface to be the area at this point. It would be in a hemisphere, right, flowing out in all directions. And uh, this would be a point located on that uh, hemisphere. And the current would be distributed out along the entire surface of that uh, hemisphere. Um, so the uh, area that we're working with is um, um, 4 pi r squared, but we're dealing with a hemisphere. So the hemisphere, the radius uh, or the area of the hemisphere is just 2 pi uh, r squared or 2 pi d1 squared, since d1 would be equal to r in this case. So we have that the potential relative to the positive electrode is equal to I rho times the distance over the area, the area of the hemisphere, 2 pi d1 squared. The d1s, one of the d1s cancels out, and we end up with the potential relative to the positive electrode is I rho over 2 pi d1. So, you know, in using a similar line of reasoning, except now we're looking at the potential relative to the negative electrode, um, you know, this electrode over here, um, so we have a negative sign in here, and you know by the by the same reasoning we have uh, a distance um, we have a distance uh, d two here. Let pop ahead here to this slide, and so this is the distance of you know of the current flow path, and we have this uh, 
v minus term, v plus term, we sum two of them together, we have this negative sign in here because this term is relative to the sink electrode, so that we have i rho over 2 pi d1 minus i rho over 2 pi d2, which would be the uh, potential at A being a combination of the potential relative to the positive electrode and the negative electrode. So V sub A then is just, you know, pulling out this uh, common factor here. So I rho over 2 pi times 1 over D1 minus 1 over D2. So, you know, we can go through a similar line of reasoning for the two potential electrodes located at the surface. And as you read through different texts, you're going to run into different notation. And um, so often the potential electrodes are referred to as M and N. <clears throat> and the source and sink electrodes are referred to as A and B. So I um, have to do a little bit of a, a shift here. Our points, perhaps like A and B, we'll call them M and N. And so um, the the potential of point A then would be V, the potential relative to uh, this electrode, and uh, the potential relative to that electrode. So that when we look at the potential at point M, we have, remember we have the differences, we have the potential relative to A plus the potential relative to B. We get I rho over 2, ty, 2 pi times 1 over D1 minus 1 over D2. And the potential at N, electrode M, N rather, is equal to I rho over 2 pi times 1 over D3, the distance to the positive electrode, minus 1 over D4, the distance to the negative or sink electrode. So we have these two potentials. Now the potential difference that's measured here by the voltmeter is going to be uh, V sub M minus V sub n. So we have these two terms, V sub n and V sub n, and the measure potential difference then is V sub m minus V sub n, or just I rho over 2 pi times, and then we just, you know, we're subtracting V sub n from V sub m, so this is 1 over D1 minus 1 over D2 minus 1 over D3, and the minus sign distributes through here, uh, plus 1 over D4. So this would be our basic expression for uh, an array with more or less any configuration, any combination of, of Ds to the, to the electrodes on the voltmeter from the source and the sink electrode. So, so we'd just be writing the potential difference. Uh, this delta V M sub N, MN that we developed over here, we'll just be referring to that as the potential difference V. And so this is equal to the current times the apparent resistivity. So this would be the resistivity that you would measure with your resistivity meter uh, divided by 2 pi times this uh, sum and difference of, of uh, uh, reciprocal distances to um, uh, the source and sink electrode from the uh, two electrodes of the voltmeter. So um, because you do run into this notation, differences of notation and text and so on, you really kind of need to sit down each time and say, okay, uh, A means this in this paper, means something else in some other paper, but uh, in order to make sense out of the papers that you're reading, often you have to kind of shift gears and, and adapt your, uh, you know, this is particularly difficult when you when you first start running into differences in the symbolic notation. So anyway, um, so we, we calculate the resistivity as uh, follows. So we're starting with this relationship that we do just developed. And this would be the apparent resistivity. Should probably use a, a subscript A here, but uh, uh, so we're, we're easily, we can easily rearrange this expression. And that puts this term, this factor in here, which is the uh, sum and uh, difference of, of distances uh, between electrodes, we have a minus 1 up here. So this is uh, reciprocal of this. 
And this term, which is 2 pi times all this, excluding the v over and the i. So we have 2 pi times 1 over d1 minus 1 over d2 minus 1 over d3 plus 1 over d4 to the minus 1 power is referred to as the geometrical factor. We just write that as g. So we can often write the expression for the apparent resistivity as just rho sub i is equal to g, the geometrical factor for whatever array configuration you happen to be working with, times the potential difference that you measure over the current that you're injecting into the ground. And that geometrical factor, again, is just this term here. We've just kind of simplified the expression. And, you know, as noted down here, the geometrical factor contains information about the positioning of the current and potential electrodes. Uh, and you, you probably can see that, that, that there are several ways that you can arrange these electrodes. We've only shown one possibility. And uh, the next time, we're going to talk about the uh, how do we get the geometrical factor for a given electrode configuration. We'll look at a uh, commonly used uh, electrode uh, array, resistivity array, referred to as the winner array. And so uh, we'll uh, talk to you next time. Thanks for joining us.